This is an EBP Life podcast. Hi guys, you're listening to Bollywood Binge and Beyond on EBP Life podcasts. I am your host Niharika Nanda, and today I am with someone who has no introduction ki zarurat nahi hai. I'm sure because one million of you are already following him. He just completed one million followers on Instagram. He is the one and the only baker and content creator. Shivesh Bhatia. Thank you. Hi, Shivesh. Hi. Welcome to Bollywood Binge. Thank you so much. Thank you. I am so glad that you could actually do this because I am one of those one million followers since six years. So I know what has gone into creating what you have created today. Yeah. So kudos to you. Thank you. And congratulations are in order because you are once again four times in a row the best food blogger at the Cosmopolitan Awards. Yes. Cosmopolitan Blogger Awards. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. How was that feeling? I mean, I saw that photograph of yours with four telephones, yes. <laughs> many trophies. So yes. how was that feeling? Almost unreal to be honest, because uh, this time I was genuinely not expecting hmm. to win. But just the fact that you know your work gets acknowledged on a platform like that in a room with so many creators that you look up to, exactly. so that feeling is honestly unmatched. And and you know I feel like it really fuels you and keeps you motivated to keep right. doing the great work because it kind of makes you feel acknowledged. Hmm. So that of course is a wonderful feeling. Absolutely, and I think that acknowledgement is just enough, you know, for that push. Correct. That okay, I have done this much. Now I need to push myself exactly. to do that. Go go that extra mile. Yes, absolutely. So, like, how did this start? Or just in the present, ki to baat kar li that yeah. you have achieved this. But, e journey start kaha se hui? How did that baker in you sort of, you know, jalam kaise hua us baker ka? So I've been baking for now what seems like a lifetime. <laughs> I started baking when I was 16, and uh, it was just something that my cousins and I decided to do. It wasn't something that was planned. I hmm. never thought that it'd be uh, something that would fascinate me. Right. But uh, it just happened, and the first time that I baked cupcakes with my cousins, I had so much fun doing it hmm. that I started baking on my own back at home, and I didn't have an oven at that time, and my equipment also was. Just like you know the regular cutlery and glazes right. and all of that, but uh, it was just the process that honestly brought me so much joy. The end result, I will not even talk about <laughs> because those were all uh, you know back to back disasters. Right. But just the the fun in creating, uh, you know, something from scratch hmm. uh, gave me so much happiness that I. You never stop baking, honestly. Right. Quite so it was pretty much the childhood जहाँ से ये चीज़ शुरू हुई. You know, I wouldn't say childhood because I sometimes feel that I wish I discovered it a little earlier right. because now I see much younger kids uh, baking, even right. like your cakes, and that's so fascinating to me. I, I don't know and, if you're uh, aware or not, although you might be. There's this championship called the Kids Baking Championship. Oh really? No, I have no idea. Was five years yeah. young kids and they are baking and they are using equipment. जिनका मुझे नाम भी नहीं पता honestly. Yeah. And Correct. I think it is so fascinating and yet so shocking that exactly. kids that age can do stuff like that. I can't do stuff yeah. like that. No, exactly. <laughs> which is why I say that a lot of people tell me that you started so early, but now I look at kids and I feel that I started late. Right. Uh, and you know, I'm so happy for these kids who found their passion in baking mm-hmm. at such a young age because. Back when I started baking, it wasn't even considered as a hobby. Right. Uh, right. It was just so hard work. Not even that, you know, because. I feel like everybody and for a long time just getting in cakes once in a year for your birthday was such mm-hmm. a norm that right. baking desserts at home from scratch was never really a very Seen popular concept. Seen as something concept. which is normal or you know, and exactly. everything. It was exactly. So, but I'm glad things are changing and now it's becoming something that people right. are not just treating as a hobby but also as a possible uh, career option. So right. that's always great to see. And you are a self-taught baker, yes, which is not very common. I mean, we see people going to culinary schools yeah. to do the same things, and probably you are doing it better. So, <laughs> how is that? Like, how did you learn? So, I have always, uh, you know, given a lot of importance to trial and error in my mm-hmm. kitchen. Even now, when I want to try something new, I do kind of do my research, read up, yeah. kind of collect as many tips and tricks as mm-hmm. possible. But then I just feel that the best learning experience is by actually giving it a shot right. and learning from your own mistakes, hmm. thinking about where you can, um, you know, get better. Of course, if I do get 
an opportunity. I'd love to go to pastry school one day. Just that I feel that now I unfortunately don't have that kind of time to take <laughs> time, off. Right. Uh, but I just feel that why it obviously helps to get that kind of formal training. Hmm. If you don't, for whatever reason, if you don't end up going to pastry school, doesn't mean that you can't actually right. uh, start baking. You know, in your kitchen. Exactly. And that is what took you to Master Chef. Yes. This year you are on the season of the recent season of Master Chef. How did that happen? So I think I don't know how it happened. <laughs> I, I only know the story from getting the call. Mm. I didn't. Uh, I don't know what the back end of uh, you know what the production house right. was thinking and what their thought process was. So I know how it started mm. for me from that one phone call that. Uh, my manager told me that they're doing this episode with six, uh, you know, guest chefs, and they'd like to have you on board. And I, of course, uh, you know, always have kind of admired the property that yeah. Master Chef has created and Absolutely. how popular it is in our country. So I, of course, said yes. And it was only until I was on set I realized that okay, this is actually a yeah. really big deal. She just got and you. Exactly. So that is how what my reaction was, and then I was like, wait, what am I doing now? Because <laughs> I realized that we were supposed to make a three course meal hmm. and my poor contestant who was cooking with me asked me to uh, you know cut a tomato and peel an <laughs> onion and I was like I don't know any of this. Oh god, that exactly. would have been very you know pressurizing. Not for me so much because <laughs> I was there for like a few hours I was just you know enjoying my guest appearance on the show right. but I do realize how much pressure it is for the contestants because for them it's uh, you know it's do or die. It's exactly, like yeah. to them it's a huge, huge deal and they've given yeah. so much time mm -hmm. uh, of their lives to kind of get to where they are. Absolutely. Uh, so I didn't want to disappoint her, which is why I honestly did everything that she asked me to do. And first time on national television, uh, like I cut my the first onion of my life on national <laughs> on television. National I don't television. know if it was a great decision, but I just did what I was supposed mm -hmm. to do. But Starting your national television journey through MasterChef in itself is a great thing, so no worries there. Exactly, I'm sure. yes. I'll do it again. If I right. get a chance, I'll do it again. I'll cut 10 more onions for yes. all I care. How was the experience in general, like being on the set with Vikas yeah. and, uh, mm -hmm. and everyone? How was it? It was great because you know I am so used to uh, my own production setup, which is this studio right. and my team that I've been working with for years and years now. So that's my comfort zone. So it was great to kind of step out of the comfort right. zone right. for a while, have your own vanity van, mm -hmm. get your makeup done, wear a chef's Ooh. coat. It was also <laughs> the first time I ever wore a chef's coat in my wow. life, and uh, so a lot of first. And uh, the the judges, of course, are the sweetest. I heard the greatest things about all of them. Right. We but, are not fans of them. Yeah, and I realized that everything that I've heard about them is so true because they're genuinely the nicest, warmest people. Right. And uh, so yeah, it was, it was a great experience mm. uh, meeting the judges, meeting the contestants and uh, trying my hands at cooking absolutely <laughs> things that I would never do otherwise. Right. One of the rounds I also kind of held my uh, uh, partner contested make uh, butter chicken sushi and I don't eat meat anymore. You know I, I stopped oh. eating meat I think okay. about seven years back. Wow. So I was like, okay, wait, kuch bhi ho hai, but uh. okay, let's go with the flow <laughs> and get this show done. Yeah. Yeah, giving it a fair shot is exactly. the least that we yeah. can. I gave my best. Right, yeah. exactly. So, any memorable moment from the sense of MasterChef? Like something that really struck a chord with you? You know, just I think being there and interacting with the contestants because as I said, the kind of time and effort and hard work that they've put into mm -hmm. uh, when I went on the show, they were 10 weeks into the show and mm -hmm. I was so tired by the end of it mm -hmm. uh, because it was a 10 hour, 12 hour long shoot and mm -hmm. to realize that these guys do it every single every day single and day. their pressure is 10x because for them again, it's something that, you know, they're trying to achieve so right. I can only imagine the kind of uh, pressure that pressure is on them. Is so it really yeah. made me appreciate uh, you know their journeys and the kind of work that they put into right. making the show the success that mm -hmm. it is. Ever actually dreamt of going as a contestant? Uh, no, no. Again, or any show like that? No, yeah, again, sure. I am very uh, this thing. I'm as I said, I'm very comfortable <laughs> in my own setup and I have my own right. platform, my own audience. Right. So I like creating content on my own terms as for my own schedule. I like having creative control. Mm -hmm. I like uh, you know sitting with my editor and kind of making right. sure that it's exactly how I envisioned it to mm -hmm. be. 
Uh, so I personally realize that while these big productions and sets are amazing and so fascinating, yes. I genuinely love what I've been able to create from scratch, and I would continue um, doing that for as long as I can. Right. So from being a baker to being a content creator, how did that transition happen? Like, when did it hit you that okay, this is something that I want to put out for the public? So I've always been somebody who loves uh, shooting pictures. Like I would. Even before I think Instagram came to us, I was always <laughs> taking pictures of everything. Right. Uh, so I've always been that. High five on that! I am yeah. that same person. Absolutely. So I feel that uh, you know. So when I was baking, I would also take pictures of the desserts, and mm. then Instagram happened. I started posting pictures, and that's when I realized that okay, there's something called food styling, and there's right. something called food photography. Mm. And when I was posting these pictures, a lot of people started asking for recipes and. After uh, you know, absolutely being exhausted of sending <laughs> recipes individually to everybody, right. I decided to kind of create my blog where I would just put everything so that mm -hmm. anybody who wants to access those recipes can right. do it themselves exactly. without having to message without me. Without DMing you or messaging you every exactly. time they see something new is on your page. Imagine there was no DM at that time, so I would email an individual recipe to an wow. individual person, right. and. Uh, just writing a blog made it easier for me. Much easier for sure. Yeah. I think writing blogs at that time was also very, you know, in the trend. So people Correct. actually used to check it out. Exactly. I don't know if they do it anymore. Yeah. Even, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But back then it was a thing. Correct. Absolutely. That was really, you know, taking up um, momentum. Yeah. So recently I've seen that you have been traveling a lot. Yeah. Like uh, during the new year you went to London. Yes. Recently you went with Pritika and Diksha Kurana oh, on a beautiful trip to yeah. Europe, Italy. How was that experience? It's beautiful. I mean, every time I travel, there's just so much to explore, so much to learn, and it's always great to kind of get away from work a bit because Me, I just yes. feel that you know, being in a creative space, you mm -hmm. do need to take a step back yes, at times to come back important. with fresher ideas, and I think my way of doing that is through travel because. Mm -hmm. It really refreshes me, fills me up with new ideas. Right. Uh, so yeah, it's always Anything the best. Really, thing. you know, uh, I, we all saw that you tried a lot of new things. Yeah. We saw you trying the croissant that is going doing rounds on Instagram these Correct. days. Correct. So how was that? Any one one thing that really you liked eating in this? So I think yeah. that croissant. It definitely uh, that was in New York, and uh, uh, I got a chance to travel. Exactly where I was picking up, so mm -hmm. I knew that this is something that I definitely have to right, do. Right, right. And uh, it was just incredible. And now I see so many places in India, in India also, also recreating right. that. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Uh, so yeah, it was great to kind of uh, taste it exactly the where it was originated. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. So that, that was definitely one of my favorite food memories. And mm -hmm. even the flavor that I tried was blueberry and corn. Okay. And I just wow. felt that it was it was such an absurd right. uh, combination, but that worked so magically. The and corn can taste sweet. Exactly, and <laughs> and wow. so good with blueberry. Hmm. So again, you know, these are things like that that you would probably not get to you know taste here. Yeah. So which is right. why travel is always special. Always special. special. Definitely. What kind of bond do you share with Pritika and Diksha? So Kritika has been my friend for years and years now. We actually saw a throwback uh, picture from a Cosmo, Cosmo Awards back, I think four years back? Correct, yes. Right. That and was I think 2018 or 2019. Wow. And uh, so we've been friends for years now and mm -hmm. she's my go-to person for every time there's uh, you know, something that I want to talk about or if I'm stuck somewhere. Right. And even for her, if there's a work decision that she mm -hmm. wants to make, whether to take a project up or not, then we always kind of... And it's always great because since we are in a very similar space, right. uh, we kind of understand what the other person exactly is going through. So that really helps to kind of have somebody to speak to. And Diksha, of course, I've kind of grown to know and right. love over the years. And mm -hmm. she's extremely adventurous and fun. And uh, while Kritika and I are like the old people, <laughs> so she kind of pushes us to go out of our comfort zone right. and you know try out different mm -hmm. things. So it's, it's an interesting uh, balance right. of three very different personalities. Right. So something you know unique or weird or funny that happened during your trip that you would like to share with us. 
So uh, one thing where Pratika and Deeksha are extremely similar and I am very different is that when I am travelling, I like to have a very set itinerary. I want to know exactly yeah. what the day is going to look like, exactly what time I am going to be, where to do exactly what. And both of them are extremely laid back. <laughs> so we had a train to catch from uh, from Milan to Venice. Okay. And uh, I was rushing them and they were <laughs> happily eating breakfast at the hotel and I knew that we were going to get late hmm. and uh, so I reached uh, uh, this thing because there was like two different cabs so I was like I'm going to go first okay. and I was at the station and the train was leaving and I was like guys where are you and they entered just two seconds late and the train just took off <laughs> and I was devastated because it was the first time I ever missed a train in my life. So you missed we, yeah, we couldn't make it so on the train. We couldn't have the Raj Simran, you know. No, we couldn't. Oh, and because there. these guys don't want to delay the train even a minute. So mm-hmm. if, it's, if it's supposed to leave at 5.30, it will, it will leave, leave at 5.30. 530. And uh, I was devastated, but these guys, because they're so used to missing trains, mm. they were just absolutely uh, Fine chilling it. and okay, because <laughs> for them it's business as per usual. Right. So I think yeah. I was pretty interesting and then mm. I realized that okay, maybe I should also chill a little mm. bit and not let that ruin the yeah. entire day right. and uh, yeah so it kind of helped for them to be around and so did you catch the we other took the next oh, uh, okay. yes and okay. we made it to venice so then that is okay exactly. that is great yeah you were in london during the christmas time yes. so how was london in christmas i mean we've all seen you know wallpapers of yes. the london bridge yeah so how was it it's one of my favorite uh, trips to do that I try and do every year. Mm-hmm. I think my fifth time being in London for Christmas. Right. And this time it was extra special because I wanted to take my mom for yeah, it. She had never. Right. We had been to London together, but during the summer, so for mm-hmm. her to experience Christmas, Christmas in yeah. London was, uh, you know, first. And I'd always told her how magical it is and how special it is, and I'd love for her to, you know, experience it with me. And we made it happen last year, right. so that definitely was mm-hmm. an amazing moment and something that I'll always remember. So, how was her experience? How did she like it? She loved it, and she was, uh, you know, so great because I was a little worried for her to be able to match the pace that I'm used to traveling on. Right. But she right. was just okay to do everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, she was. Uh, uh, you know, walk, okay, walking for hours, uh-huh. exploring different things, right. being patient while I take my pictures. <laughs> she took so many pictures of me, right. and uh, it was also the first trip that the both of us did together without mm-hmm. my dad and my sister. Right. And uh, I think it went amazingly, and I told her that we have to do it every single year mm-hmm. now. That is so, so we're nice. gonna try and make it a tradition. Right. For parents to be like, I okay. I also started my food vlogging journey. That is, I started following you about five, five, six years back. All right. But uh, didn't work out. I'm still at 7,000 uh, 7, followers. Okay. Didn't reach 10k, even though I tried my best, but uh-huh. didn't. Yeah. So I know the kind of patience that it takes from our parents, from our friends, from yeah. our siblings to not, you know, get irritated while you're clicking pictures, exactly. making videos. Yes. So her being fine with it and not getting irritated in itself is Absolutely. a big thing. Yeah, I agree. So tell me this, uh, Shivesh, like as you said in the beginning also that there are days when you know things just get a little too much and you yeah. need your break and that is what you do traveling for. Yeah. So when traveling is not you know mm-hmm. um, in the scene and you are just really exhausted, what is your me time recipe? Something that really brings you back to your own. Just hanging out with my pet Yoda mm-hmm. because that just brings me so much joy right. and uh, yeah it always kind of helps me get over a bad day for sure no matter what is happening I know if I spend time with him I'll be mm-hmm. happy by the end of it. He's your perfect stress master. Absolutely. Okay so let's play a small game. It's a rapid fire since you're a food blogger you're, I'm sure that you're a foodie as well. Yes. Right so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions okay. about things in your kitchen, things in your fridge, things that you like to make, stuff All like right. that. Okay. Sure. So the first question is a dish that is your favorite that you can have any and every time of the day. I'm craving chole bhature right now. So that's <laughs> the first thing that comes to my mind. Right. I think that is the case for every person. Yeah. Exactly. Right? And dairy lights as well. Yeah. Because that's the case for me also. Something that you have not tried yet from anywhere in India or outside of India that you really want to. There's so many regional dishes that I feel that I haven't tried mm-hmm. and I probably wouldn't even know the names of. 
but i definitely want to like i'm always open to trying out new food especially right. from our own country mm-hmm. because i you know more often than not always love it nice and i kind of do a little bit uh, during my tested videos mm-hmm. and i kind of try different things which right. i have not been able to but uh, honestly i'm not going to put like one name to it but mm-hmm. i'm happy to uh, try, to try out it. regional cuisines and dishes from every corner of our country for sure okay you are doing this recent series of tested by shivish yes so any one hack from that or in general also you just found out over the internet as is a part of your routine so i recently uh, tried this hack which i've not posted yet hmm. but of peeling boiled eggs and okay. instead of like trying to do it with your hand like hmm. that this what you can do is put it in a container with some water okay. and just shake it and within one minute All the peel kind of cleanly comes out, and you get wow. boiled eggs, which you can eat. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, something really you know one of the worst dis- dishes or baked items that you've ever had in your life. Oh, so many. <laughs> and right now, also we did this video on cheap versus expensive, mm-hmm. and uh, so there my team kind of tries to get one expensive of each and one like, and, uh, cheap of these. I've had a lot of these, you know, not bad. Uh, desserts were desserts made with bad quality ingredients, but right. now I feel that having eaten so many mm. from everywhere, I just can tell if it's not made with good quality chocolate, and so those things right. kind of really you can catch it very well yeah. and it puts you off. Correct. Okay. So, what is that one ingredient or one dish or one anything related to food that is always there present in your fridge? I think vanilla because as a baker, I think it's one go-to. a uh, very basic ingredient that right. i personally right. love working with mm. so i make sure i have that in my That's pantry always okay. okay what is your comfort food i think anything that my mom makes mostly mm. but uh, i think rajma chawal is something that uh, is yeah. really comforting i i agree okay. mm. that that's for the rapid fire and pretty okay. well it was it was pretty rapid like you finished out five to six questions yeah. within the quite some quite yeah. a little time so yeah <laughs> So when it comes to food, like you said that in master, it was your first time cutting a tomato or peeling an, uh, yeah. an onion. So uh, kitchen may who is more present, you or your mom at home? So my mom most definitely because mm-hmm. she can do everything. Right. I can only do desserts, which mm-hmm. I feel like is pretty limited if you compare it to the kind of right. food that she can make. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So it's mostly your yeah. mom. Okay. Any tips for young bakers or young content creators that you would like to share with them? So I think, as you said, patience is extremely important because I feel that uh, you know uh, there there's just like so much happening in this space right now. And there's so right. much competition that uh, a lot of things would not be in your hands. Mm-hmm. But I think being patient really helps. For me also, I feel that I'm not the best baker out there, or I don't have the the finest photography skills mm-hmm. or uh, no, the best. No, no, <laughs> I I genuinely think that I don't. But I think what has really helped me. is the fact that i have stayed uh, consistent and patient throughout these years and i've shown up every day mm-hmm. and at least taking care of the bit that is in my control which is creating the best mm-hmm. content that i possibly can and putting it out mm-hmm. and what happens after that is something that i'm trying to also detach from yes, a lot so i think that really helps correct yeah so does that create a mental pressure or does that you know hamper your mental health also because i'm sure that everyone goes through a slump okay. where yeah. maybe views are not coming yes. or likes are not coming or because no matter how much we deny yeah. it it's a game of numbers absolutely so does that you know hamper your mental health as well so there are a lot of phases where you feel low and you feel disappointed because obviously each content piece takes up so much time and effort right. and for that to not perform well of course mm-hmm. kind of makes you feel that oh, i wish people would have seen this because that's why you do end up creating a piece of content right, right. but uh, i kind of now because i've been doing it for so many years mm-hmm. i've realized that uh, again the key is consistency so mm-hmm. even if there's a period of slump i have to kind of just power through it and uh, you know content will pick up at right. some point so right. So recently, you were also, uh, you know, a part of the billboard that was created by Select City Walk, yes. one of the biggest malls of Delhi. Yes. How was that feeling? That was incredible, and uh, I honestly, I was extremely hyped about it. But mm. then finally seeing the holding up yeah. there was a completely different feeling altogether. Yeah. So that yeah. is one opportunity that mm. I was extremely grateful for last right. year. And you deserve it by all means. I mean, you've been Thank creating you. content since. so long yeah. and a lot of content creators were have been a part of billboards recently right. like yes. it's a trend i think it's become a trend now yes exactly so but 
honestly seeing OGs like you yeah. there sort of restores your belief ki theek hai there are people who are new but there are the yeah. OG people also who are getting the recognition okay. that they deserve by all yeah. means so what is that one you know i mean i have only mentioned so many of them what is that one thing or one achievement that really made you feel okay i have established myself you know maybe as a content creator as a baker mm-hmm. as a public figure whichever way you want to share you know for me i think uh, is when i bought my first newspaper article because i feel like that kind of gives you so much legitimacy right. as a creator and especially because when uh, my first newspaper feature came out mm-hmm. i think again a uh, content creation was not treated as a full time right. uh, profession or something that people could actually uh, pursue as a career mm-hmm. so i think that kind of really legitimized the entire thing for me for my family for friends because Till then, I was also to a large extent struggling to explain what exactly I do to a lot of people. Right. So I think for me that that was a great feeling, mm. and uh, yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. And I think even you know during this entire period of the pandemic, COVID, I think that also was a period when content creation sort of yeah. gained more weightage as a career. Correct. Right. And also baking. So suddenly took up like every took off sorry every yeah. one was baking stuff every one yeah. was creating cakes so how was that feeling did you feel the okay now every one i know is in my domain so yeah. did that all of no absolutely even now when i meet so many people they tell me that i created uh your desserts during lockdown because i think that's when everybody was hmm. getting on to the internet looking for the exactly looking for recipes to make right uh so yeah that i think was great in terms of content creation hmm. it was obviously difficult to keep yourself motivated at that time right. to keep creating content hmm. but i'm glad that i did because i think i saw massive growth on my youtube channel hmm. and on my instagram during that right because that was also yeah. period because a lot of limitations were there right. and most of us were not even in the mental space to keep going on exactly. working showing up every yeah. day so to do that in that period kudos to you Thank for you. having done that i will i also created one of your recipes okay. your chocolate fudge all right i yes. actually created that because my and my uh, dad both of our birthdays is like 2 weeks apart okay and right. it was mid lockdown for 2 years mm-hmm. both of our birthdays okay. coming in may It was like I have to do something, you know, yeah, different or special. special. Yeah. At least, you know, chai ghar pe ya celebrate. Yeah. So I made that chocolate fudge. Oh, fantastic! It's <laughs> amazing. Seriously, it was. A seventeen or an eighteen-year-old Shivesh, what do you want to tell him today when you have sort of created a space for yourself and established yourself as a content creator and as a baker? I think I would most definitely tell him that I'm extremely proud of him because I feel that. a lot of my like a big foundation of my career was laid at that time by the 17 18 year old shivesh who didn't even know what uh, this is going to lead into because right. at that time i'm sure i didn't even imagine that this is going to become my profession and i'm mm-hmm. going to make a career out of it or it's going to become something beyond that i never imagined it to be right. so i would just tell him to be proud of being able to successfully manage college with work and not giving up and for me consistent and for right. actually letting me reap the benefits of mm. the the hard work that the, you know that the, 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 the young situation yeah that is so great and it's also you know again uh, as you said consistency yeah. really brings shows you results that yeah. you cannot even imagine i mean look at you today yeah. So when did when you hit that one million mark? When you know finally from nine 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 you were at okay one million. Yeah. How was that? It was honestly okay. I know that's a very disappointing answer. Actually, it's not. Yeah. Like, I'll I'll also give a little bit of my insight, my yeah. two cents on this thing. A lot of content creators and I've talked to. Yeah. They say that the first one thousand, the first ten k, the first hundred k is always more exciting than a bigger right. milestone that comes exactly. subsequently. Exactly, and I mean, I was looking forward to it because I thought that oh, it's gonna like feel amazing, and it did feel great, but not amazing. I mean, the next day I was back to work <laughs> thinking about what to create now. So right. I feel like the number game is honestly never ending because now I'm just like, okay, now what next? What's the big milestone that you want to achieve? So that's like a never ending cycle, which is why I've kind of now made a conscious effort to not attach so much importance to numbers. It is important. Uh, yeah. Then it can really trouble you because, of course, as I said in the beginning, also that 
there are going to be moments of slumps. Yeah. There are going to be you know points where you feel demotivated because you're not seeing the result that you expect yeah. out of it. But it's a part of the game after exactly. all. Which profession does not have you know yeah. such periods? Every Correct. profession does. It was so great talking to you today, yeah, getting right. your insights on so many things, talking Thank about you. your experiences, and uh, this was my fangirl moment. I'm being <laughs> brutally honest right now because. As I mentioned multiple times in this conversation, <laughs> I've been following you since so Thank long. Thank you. So it was seriously so great having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. That is so great. Keep listening to Bollywood Binge and Beyond on ABP Live podcast.